Lunasa is fast approaching. It always falls in or around the 1st of August on Chéad Law de V Lunasa, as we call it in Irish. It's also commonly known as Lamas Day or Garland Sunday in Ireland, or even Bilberry Sunday in different parts of the country. Now, you might be thinking, well, why is it a Sunday if it's supposed to be on the 1st of August every year? Well, it's time to celebrate the beginning of the harvest and all of your hard work throughout the year. So if you're a practical farmer, you would be sensible enough to keep your celebrations to a Sunday so that you can get on with a clear work week ahead without interruption. Now, in days gone by, there'd be all sorts of feasting and games, all sorts of fun. It's named after the Celtic deity Lú Lávada. That's Lú of the Long Arm in Irish. Now, Long Arm might seem like a bit of a strange nickname for a god, but it's because he was a master of all trades, a bit of a superhero of sorts. He was said to be handsome, intelligent, a master craftsman and a heroic warrior. Quite the catch. I'm sure he was very funny too. Lou was also renowned for his incredible magic spear. <laughs> Behave. And that was said to be so powerful, it was supposed to be unbeatable in battle. The spear was called on Guy Ossel, and it could return to his hand after being thrown like a mythical boomerang. Actually, Irish mythology is littered with these sorts of magical spears. Some could kill with one end and restore life with the other. In the Battle of Moitura, Lu faced his greatest adversary, and that was his own grandfather, Balor of the Evil Eye. Now, his eye, he only had one, was said to be so powerful it could destroy anything it looked at. But Lu being the brave and clever, clever warrior that he was, managed to defeat Balor, and this fulfilled a prophecy and saved his people. My favourite part is when Balor's eye fell to the ground. It actually created a magical lake, and it's called Loch Nassul today, or the Lake of the Eye, and it's in County Sligo. This isn't any normal lake, it's actually a thurlock, or a seasonal lake, and this ephemeral nature it has it just adds to its mystery. Anyway, back to Lunasa. You know all these agricultural shows and stuff that you see around at this time of the year in Ireland? I think that these actually reflect the ancient festival because these gatherings are all about celebrating the harvest, just like in the old days. Farmers in particular and communities in general come together and they showcase their crops, their livestock, and they might enjoy traditional music and dance or even participate in various competitions. These agricultural shows harken back to the Tathlan Games. Now, they were a type of Irish Olympic Games and they were just as ancient. They're said to date back over 2,000 years and they have been they're said to have been established by Lou himself. And that was done in honour of his own stepmother, Taltu. Now, Taltu was a great woman because she cleared the entire land for agriculture, but then she died. So in her honour, there were all sorts of activities. There was chariot racing, athletics, feasting, hurling, and even storytelling. And the ancients really understood that skill wasn't just in the form of athleticism, but it came with your brain too. One of my favourite traditions associated with Lunasa is the making of harvest knots. These are intricate decorations made from the first sheaf of wheat or barley harvested. Farmers would weave these knots and wear them as a sign of good luck and a bountiful harvest. It was believed that wearing a harvest knot would ensure a successful and plentiful season ahead. The knots themselves, though, are very intricate and very beautiful, often crafted with great care and skill, and that reflected the skill of the people at the time. Sometimes at the harvest dance at the end of the celebrations, a young man might give uh, his potential partner 
his own knot as a sign of his affection, which I think is really sweet. Here in Mayo, people probably still know Lunasa better as Reek Sunday, because it's the traditional day to climb the Reek, or as it's properly known, Crow Patrick. Many people still climb it today barefoot, and that's supposed to be a penitential kind of an offering. Now, up to the early medieval period in Ireland, couples would also practice something called hand fasting. And that's a, a traditional Celtic form of temporary marriage. Now, the ceremony involved a symbolic tying of hands with a cord or a ribbon, and that signified their union for a year and a day. That's where we get the saying, tying the knot from. This allowed couples to live together and test drive their compatibility before committing to a more permanent marriage. Not a bad idea. Nowadays, of course, the ancient ritual has been restored to a lot of people who use it in their own wedding ceremonies, although it would be expected that people would try and stay together a little bit longer than a year and a day now. So given all that, Lunasa isn't just about harvesting crops. It's about celebrating our heritage, remembering the old legends and coming together as a community. It's a time to give thanks and to enjoy the fruits of our labour, literally. Of course, nowadays we're not all farmers anymore, but that doesn't mean we can't celebrate Lunasa. We can do so by appreciating the good things in our lives and remembering everything that we should be grateful for. Now, Speaking of stories, a little reminder that if you'd like to know more about Valor's famous evil eye and how Lou defeated him, you could tune in to my newest episode of The Sleepy Scholar on YouTube or on any of the platforms uh, for podcasts. I'll be telling the full story to help you drift off to sleep. Now, I promise it won't be too scary. I'll try and keep it nice and calm and dreamy. And you will go off to sleep with dreams of heroes and ancient battles. So please don't forget to like, please share it and follow for lots more folklore, mythology and stories that I hope will help you to sleep. Ihawai.